Howdy y'all and welcome to another video. So I want to start off by saying I'm so sorry for not being very consistent recently. I've been crazy busy and as I get into the story, you'll probably understand why I've been so busy. Today's story is honestly, it's I, I never thought in my wildest dreams that this would be a video that I would ever be making. Um, <laughs> without further delay, let's get into it. just left our house we just got on the interstate we were driving down and I go mom there's a horse on the side of the road and she's like what she's you know driving 70 miles an hour right and I'm like no you have to stop there is a horse right there and so she stops you know backs up a little bit we get out I'm like yeah sure enough there's a horse down there kind of in the weeds grazing on the side of a huge interstate and I'm like like what what how, this horse could literally walk into the road at any minute and cause a huge accident and it will lose its life and I'm like oh my gosh and so as soon as I get out of the truck I smell this just horrific smell and I realize it's the horse and I go down and I look and this horse he has maggots covering his withers they were an inch high surrounding the whole thing with maggots he had cuts all over him skin and bones you guys I mean and I'm like I'm thinking to myself what the heck happened to this horse like why is he on the side of the interstate the first thing that came to mind was like okay this is probably an older horse and you know I couldn't get a good look at these wounds I mean obviously there were wounds because the maggots were eating something and I'm like okay so it's an older horse you know I'm thinking to myself I wonder if he has saddle sores you know like does are those it's right on the withers so maybe that's from a saddle while we were driving along the interstate about a mile back there was a semi pulled off to the side I think he had like a flat tire or something and there was a police officer stopped with him and so we knew like okay at some point in time highway patrol police officer is going to be coming along and so when he came along it was about 15 minutes later my mom flagged him down and she was like there was a horse over here like this is going to cause a major accident if he gets out into the road he's obviously extremely injured um, he's in shock like can we go back we live five miles away like literally take us ten minutes to run home and get our horse trailer and take him back home so we can give him the care he needs and the police officer he really didn't he didn't say much honestly and there was a falling down barbed wire fence like literally one strand barbed wire fence rusty old barbed wire fence on the ground and so the police officer comes he calls his deputy two more police officer cars arrive and they just send the horse they just kind of shoo him they kind of smack him on the butt with a little stick and shoo him through this falling down barbed wire fence and there's a creek bed in the bottom so he just goes right down into the creek bed and this horse just starts drinking and drinking I mean he was obviously extremely dehydrated and they just I mean I was just so blown away they just picked up this barbed wire fence and they just set it on some sticks and we were like okay our job is done the situation has been contained and I'm like you realize this horse is just gonna get right back out on the interstate there's no food there it's a creek bed and on the other side of that is woods and next to the interstate along the whole thing is it's nice and grassy and I'm like you realize this horse is just gonna go right back out in the grass so I said to the police officer is there something I can do like can we go the back way around and get the horse because there was a dirt road that went to that section I was like can we go around and get the horse and the one police officer he was just like nah I mean he's just gonna die just leave him he's just he's just gonna die and so my mom went over to the deputy and she he had been on the phone with the property owner and she goes hey um 
can can we do we have permission to take the horse and he's just like you know what he's gonna die just yeah sure you can take him and so we he gave us the property owner's contact information so my mom calls the property owner he's kind of rude honestly we called him he was just like these horses they've been getting out they've been busting through my fence they've been letting my cows out there's a stallion out there they're just a wild herd reproducing they're not mine so my mom was like look sir i just want to i just want to come take the horse um, and get him to much needed care and the guy was like, okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, come get him You can you can come get him. Then we drove around and we came to a horse farm We only lived like seven miles from here So we knew kind of like who they were a little bit and so we were like, oh, maybe they know who he is Like there's a horse or they are the only other horse farm besides us around and he's not ours So we're like, okay, you know, maybe they know something about him So we get out and we go over and we talk to some guys we're like, hey, you know, like we kind of just give them the scoop on things and they're like, oh yeah, see, look over there. And we look and sure enough, there is a wild herd of horses. And he's like, yeah, there was just a baby born out there. And we're like, do you know anything about him? He's like, oh yeah, they've been out there for like 20 years. They're reproducing. Every time a colt gets big enough, a stallion kills them. There's dead horses out there all the time. And he's like, you know, we've tried to put an end to it multiple times. We've tried to stop and it's just we kind of gave up because we can't figure out how to get them rescued. And we're like, wait, wh what? Oh my gosh. So then we figure out we're like those wounds on his withers were from a stallion biting him. When a stallion is trying to kill another horse, they will grab on either their neck or on their withers to try to grab a tendon. And if they get the tendon, the horse is paralyzed and dies. Otherwise, if they bite the withers and they get infected, it's gonna die anyway. So we're like, oh, so that's what happened to him. And you know, he'd been driven through the barbed wire fence. He was not in the pasture. He was down in this creek bed that was on the other side of the cow pasture. And these horses weren't even on the correct property. So after we were done talking, we got back in our vehicle and started driving down the road to keep looking for him because he wasn't out with this herd. He'd been chased out of it, so we still had to find him. I could see the interstate, I could see the creek bed, I could see the cow pasture, and I was like, okay, he's probably right in here somewhere. And so my mom was like, all right, um, I'm going to drive up the road and turn around. You can get out and go out and look in the pasture. And while we had been driving, my mom was like, okay, if I don't find him in 10 minutes, we're going home and she's like you know i feel like we're supposed to save him so if we are we need to find him in 10 minutes or we're going home because this is a lost cause we had been driving around at that point for about 30 minutes and had not seen him anywhere it was a 100 degree day and it was just like we can't we're wearing shorts and we're wearing sandals we were not planning on doing this you know so we're like okay um you know okay 10 minutes we're just gonna look and so I ran out into the pasture to look for him, and my mom was about, she just got up there, like I could still see the truck, and we were still in earshot of each other, and she goes, Hope, I found him, I see him, he's right down there, and so um, she turns around, I run down into the bank, and I mean, it was very steep, you know, this is rattlesnake country, <laughs> anything, ticks, chiggers, I mean, like, and I'm wearing shorts and sandals, and I don't even know, I God, I mean, that's the only reason I did not get bit by a snake or bit by something because I was just going through this woods. Not the smartest thing to do, but at that point I was running on adrenaline basically. So I found him down in this creek bank. He was septic, probably not as dehydrated as he had been because he was in a creek, which honestly was probably the best thing that could have happened to him. He was extremely stocked up in his hind legs. So going down there and standing in that cold water was honestly the best thing that he could have done. Severely malnourished um, because these horses were just out there reproducing and they didn't have the proper care. They didn't have supplements. They weren't getting dewormed. They weren't, they didn't have food. We're in a drought right now. And so their pasture is just dirt. They had nothing. They were severely malnourished. Because the property owner told us that there were stallions out there, my mom was like, well, if he's from that herd, um, you better check and make sure Sure he's not a stallion and so I look under and sure enough he is because of being inbred and malnourished he only had one testicle descended and so when I had first looked I didn't see any because it was on the other side so I was thinking to myself oh he's a gelding but he wasn't he was a colt and so that led me to be like I wonder how young he is like he's a colt and so I went and I looked at his teeth and sure enough all of his teeth were baby teeth and then I looked a little more closely at his feet and I was like, oh yeah, there's where the baby foot is growing out. So we found out he's a year old, or somewhere around a year old. This is a wild colt, severely injured, 
And um, he's letting us do what to him? Like, we were literally in the creek with him, splashing water, cleaning off his wounds, training him to be led and do all this other crazy stuff, and he'd never been touched, never had human contact, and he's letting us do all this? I mean, he was a superstar. So we were stuck in the creek bank with him for three hours. So one side, there was, we were in the creek, so the creek is like here, um, and one side there was like a waterfall kind of a thing, so it was this big shelf that dropped off and there was water. And then on the other side of the creek going out, there was a big log across and we couldn't cross there. And then one side of the other side of the creek was the interstate here with the woods. And then on this side, there was a steep bank and then a really steep bank up into the woods. And so we were stuck there trying to get him out. He couldn't move very well because he was very stocked up and he had cuts all over his legs. Um, he had a huge cut on his jaw that was at least half an inch to an inch deep for where barbed wire had he'd ripped his face open on barbed wire this guy was just so so screwed up because he was a baby he didn't know how to lead so trying to get him out of the creek bank doing pressure on his halter and that kind of thing he the instinct is when they feel pressure on their head to back up from it so it took us a long time, but we finally got him out of the creek. And right as we did, my brother, we called my brother and my grandma and another friend to come and help us. And so they were just getting there as we got him out of the creek. We were able to get him out through the woods, um, which was a long process. My brother had gone to get the trailer, and so he was going to bring that back. And we had called a couple more friends, and they were coming to help us get him on the trailer. And so uh, we were walking him down the road and there's that herd of wild horses out there. As soon as he saw his dad, he just like, he freaked. He wouldn't go towards them. So one of our other friends ended up having to like throw some stuff at the stallion. Didn't hit him or anything like that, but threw some stuff at him to try to get him to move away because this little colt was not, he was not going to walk past him. So finally, we got him over to the trailer. A bunch of guys that were able to come and help us get him in the trailer. We basically had to lift him like into the trailer because he, you know, he'd never been in a trailer before. He'd never had human contact before. So for all we were able to do, we had to walk him like a mile and a half down the dirt road. And just that was uh, incredible that we were able to do that. So we finally got him in the trailer and we got him home and we started treating his wounds and it's been six weeks since we brought him home. So we ended up naming him Moses and the name Moses actually has a lot of significance and I would love to tell you guys more about why we named him that in another video. But now I'm going to tell you guys a little bit more of the story about the herd. So basically we figured out the story as good as we could about this herd. We figured out that 18 years ago, a guy had put a mare and a stallion out on his hunting property. And the mare and the stallion had a colt. And the colt grew up and killed his dad. Now the inbreeding starts because the stallion, who was the original mare and stallion's son, killed his dad and started breeding his mom. And then they had babies they've just been breeding and anytime a colt gets big enough and the stallion can kind of start to sense his testosterone and that kind of thing the stallion chases him out and pretty much all the colts have ended up dead there's two out there that have managed to survive I don't know how but they did and those are the only other two colts and so um, Moses was one of these babies that was a colt that the stallion kicked out when he could smell his testosterone starting to come in because they, they kill them when they're still babies so they don't take them out of the herd. Now the interesting thing, you may be like, oh my gosh, I didn't know horses were so like me. Like I had no idea they were so bloodthirsty. The thing is, they're really not. Basically in the wild, like when they're actually wild on the ranges, like with the wild mustangs and that kind of thing, this does happen. A stallion kicks out the colts and the colts run. They run, they leave. The difference in this situation is on the range, they just have the range. They can run and run and run and get away from the stallion. In this situation, the stallion and the colt are all trapped inside a barbed wire fence. So when the stallion goes after the colt, the colt has nowhere to go. It goes through the barbed wire fence like Moses did and ends up severely scratched and attacked because that's a last resort. Like these horses don't wanna run through the fence, 
but they go through the fence because they know they're going to get killed. They get killed anyways, though, because they end up getting their wounds severely infected. So that is the difference. That's why out on the range, it's okay, you know? Like, the stallion will attack them, but they'll leave. The other thing he's doing, not the entire time, because there are mares that have lived to tell the tale, but he's breeding the fillies way too young, and there's nobody out there to help them when they have complications in labor. So these mares are also just out there dying because they're getting bred way too young. So with all that being said, we figured out we needed to rescue the herd. There had been attempts to try to rescue them in the past, and this time we had to get through. There was, we could not just let this keep going on. We love horses way too much. So a really good friend of ours who was helping with the rescuing Moses was doing all of the corresponding with everybody, trying to find the right person to talk to, trying to find the right channels to go through to get these horses saved. So finally, she came up with an offer to just outright buy all of these horses so that they would be in our hands and they would be getting their proper care we'd be able to take care of them but we wouldn't have to worry about them we submitted an offer and it got declined the guy came back and said I have a better offer sorry but no so the only other offer that would have been coming in would have been for meat and obviously we're thinking no, no 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 we have not done all of this for these horses to end up on a truck to Mexico you know, no, we are going to save these horses. And we were like, all right, we're gonna have to come in with a higher offer. We're not made of money, but we have to come in with a higher offer because we can't let these horses just be out there starving to death, killing each other. I mean, these are beautiful horses and they deserve a second chance. So we decided, okay, we're gonna have to come in with a higher offer. And so we did, and thank God he accepted it. But if you remember what I said earlier, we're not made of money. And it's gonna take a lot of money to geld all of these horses, to get them all of the medicine that they're gonna need, all the deworming, all of the feed, and also the upkeep until we can find homes. There's 11 of them in total, including Moses. If you did get inspired at all by the story and want to help out at all, there's a link down below. We would so, so appreciate if you would consider donating even just a little bit to the cause. Like I said, this is gonna take a lot of money. None of us were expecting that we were gonna have to do this, but I mean, there's nothing else we could do. And even if the funds don't come in, it doesn't change it. We're gonna do it, we are doing it. But if you would like to support it, we would so, so appreciate it. If you wanna be a part of this and want to, you know, be part of this cause, I mean, that would just be, so amazing and we would so appreciate it. So if you would consider donating to their cause, there is a link down below. And if you want, you know, more information about them, if you would like to see more pictures of them and, you know, just kind of follow their story, make sure to subscribe and like. And if you want to ask me any questions about them, you can ask that in the comments or if you have more in-depth questions, please, please feel free to DM me on Instagram. I will answer my DMs, so you can message me on there. If you're wanting to get in touch with me, please do that. I don't always respond to my comments because I have a few, so I apologize about that, but you can DM me on Instagram and I will respond. Instagram, Pogo the Pony, DM me on there. If you have any questions, you wanna see pictures about them, you wanna ask questions about them, if you know anybody that's in um, Tennessee or any of the surrounding states that might be interested in coming to adopt a horse or if you live nearby and you wanna just like come visit them or something, make sure to DM me on Instagram and we can set something up, that would be awesome. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this story and enjoy today's video and make sure to subscribe because I will be updating you guys on this story. I mean, this is not done yet. This, this is just the beginning of it. So make sure to subscribe and like and leave a comment if you want to. And yeah, subscribe to follow Moses's journey. Bye.